welcome back to Tech Fix and continuing straight from the last video we were basically just going over output in this video we're going to be going over input in C++ and how to do basically input uh, and get input from the user uh, that will be, then be stored into our program so there are two new things that we're going to need here so we're going to go ahead and delete everything within the it main function or I'll just call it from now on the main function uh, delete everything inside of the braces and what we're going to want to type in is CIN, which stands for console input, two greater than signs, and a variable, which is something we'll talk about in a second. So just type in the letter X and a semicolon to end that line of code. Um, what a variable is, is it allows us to store information in a specific spot on our computer or within the program uh, that will allow us to then take the information and do things with it within the program. So the user enters a piece of information, it gets stored into this specific variable, which you can name anything by the way. Uh, so we could give it the name, uh, we just say tech, and it'll do the same thing. So this is just made to store information. Now variables have different types, and we'll go over all the types later. But there are two basic types of variables that you're going to want to know. It is the int variable, which is a declaring an integer, and the string variable, which is declaring a set of words. So but in both cases, we're going to want to, again, type in the variable name. In this case, we have int. So we're going to give that integer variable a name, and we're going to name it x. So integer x, and then we set it equal to some specific integer value. So if you don't know what an integer is, look it up really quick. Uh, it's very simple, um, but basically it's just the whole number, um, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. Um, well, I should have started the backwards. So negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Just whole numbers that, um, again, aren't decimals or fractions. And we're just going to again type in one of those. So we're just going to say four. And we're going to give our string the same type of thing. So we give it the name y. Again, you can name it whatever you want. You don't want to give it the same name if it is the same variable type. But since they're different variable types, we could give it the same name if we really wanted. String y is equal to some string, which if you remember, words are always stored in quotations. And then we just type in whatever we want in type of, inside of here. Uh, we end that with a semicolon, and that's the end of that. So when we have a variable, we're taking the information, uh, given that type of information, whether it's a letter or a number, and we're storing it into a variable um, just by setting it equal to something. There are other ways to store, and we're going to go over that right now. Um, this is going to be a little bit longer video. Not really, actually. I'll end it here soon because I don't want to overcomplicate you guys and get too much information in one video just to uh, again overcomplicate things so this is how you create a variable and these are two basic types of variables now what we can take from this is that we don't always have to have the variable declared by us we can have that variable just have a blank spot and then have the user declare that variable given a CIN or a console input command and that again will allow them to type in something and store that inside of a variable so let's say that we didn't want the user to enter numbers so first we're going to tell the user using our console output from the console output video that i made and we're just going to say please enter a integer then we're going to go ahead and end that line and after that we're going to say we need somewhere for the we need somewhere for the user to store their information and somewhere for them to type it in. So for them to have some somewhere to type in the information, we use CIN, console input, two greater than signs, and the variable we want that information stored in. So it says it's an integer, we have to store it in an integer variable. Since we named our integer x, we just simply put x down here. So when the user or so when the user sees this, they'll be given a prompt to then type in something and it'll be stored within variable x. So if we build and run, we'll see. Please enter an integer value. We're going to then just type in the integer 10, click enter, and that's the end of the program. So it stored it in x. And to show you guys that, after we type in x, 
we'll just go ahead and say here is the number you enter and then we'll display that to them by typing two less than signs and just putting that variable name uh, again that will just bring up the information from the variable and then ending that line go ahead build and run again and we'll type in that same integer 10 and after that you see here's the integer or here's the number you entered 10 so we'll then we can close that we can go back we can type in 5 and here's the number you entered 5 and as you can see it remembers what you are entering and it saves it and then displays it back when called so I could also do something in the back end uh, just as a bonus for this video um, and say after we get the integer or after we get that variable stored uh, for, from the user so it's stored in X we're gonna change the value so let's say whatever they enter of X we're gonna set it equal to that value plus 10 now when the user has entered a value it'll automatically add 10 to it and then display it out to us on the screen so we're gonna go ahead and build and run in this program window we're gonna enter the number 10 and you can see here is the number you entered and it says 20 because we took that number we plus or we added 10 to it and then we said okay what is that number again after all of this had went down so as you can see the structure of a program goes from top to bottom and that is something to notice from this as well and if you guys want as a bonus just go ahead and um or not as a bonus this was the bonus for the video but if you want you can send me your um, problems or some cool things that you've done using this trick um, if you guys want to jump ahead again, just send me some cool code if you have any uh, that you've written or if you have any questions about this code or how to in, uh, implement anything, anything on C++, send it to me and I will help you out. Other than that, I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching. As always, like and subscribe and I will see you guys again in the next video.